Okay, so today we wanna to take a look at how you deploy and install Kubeflow for Azure on your local machine as well as within the Azure portal. So the first thing you wanna do is make a test directory and change to that directory on your local machine. Then after that, you wanna log in to Azure with AZ login and then set the subscription after you logged in. Once that's done, just create a resource group give the resource group a name, and then choose the location. You might need to re-authenticate because of some MFA issues and then try to create that resource group again. If you do, um, that, that's how you do it there uh, with the AZ login command. So the next thing to do is to create the cluster. Um, so we are specifying the resource group, the name, the size of the machines, the count, and the location and we're generating SSH keys. And when it's done, we see the output from the Azure API. The next thing you do only once is get the credentials, which puts them in your .cube slash config file. So it merged that as the current context in the cube config file. So the next thing you have to do if you don't have it already is get kfctl and unzip it and untar it. So use the wget command to get it from GitHub. I've got the Darwin version and then I g unzip it and then tar xvf to expand it and then remove the tar file. So what you do after that is set up Kubeflow. Um, you wanna export your path, your local path. Um, you wanna export the Kubeflow name the base directory, the kubeflow directory, which is a combination of base directory and kubeflow name, and the config URI you wanna set, which is for ISTIO. So you make the directory, you change to the directory, um, export those paths, and then deploy kubeflow which, with the kfctl apply command using that config URI. This takes a little while, I've sped it up. Um, it could take a few minutes for you. Uh, cluster creation earlier also takes a little while, so I've sped that up for you as well. So once it's done, you want to verify the deployment by doing a kubectl get all with the name of Kubeflow, and we should get back information about the deployment. So it's showing that the there's a few um, apps that aren't quite ready yet, but we're going to move forward anyway. So the next thing you wanna do is create an external endpoint using port forwarding to visit the cluster from the local machine. So you run the kubectl port forward with the Istio ingress gateway on your forwarding 8080 to 80. So if we go to a browser and we put in localhost 8080, we can see the Kubeflow dashboard, but we get an error right away. We're unable to, to connect to the profile controller, I think it was. Um, we can take a quick look at the cluster in Azure. It looks like that. You can see we have our services running and we have a node pool consisting of those nodes that we set up earlier, the standard uh, DS, D4S V3 machines. So unable to contact profile controller. I'm not really sure why it says that, um, <clears throat> but we're just gonna try to continue on by creating a new server. We give it a name. We choose a custom image or a default image. We can choose whether or not we want to use persistent storage for the home directories. And we don't have a namespace. So you do have to have a namespace before you can continue in this area. So um, you can see at the top left, it says no namespaces. So we need to create one. So if we log out and log back in, it allows us to finish setup and define a namespace. So we're just gonna call it anonymous. Now we have a namespace you can see in the top left. Now we can create a notebook server. Give it a name of TF for TensorFlow, TensorFlow and then launch it. These are small instances, so they take a while to launch. But once it's launched, you can take a look at it in the browser. So you can see, because we're port forwarding, we can get um, the logging on the terminal, and we're getting errors creating streams, timeouts. That could be because the cluster isn't quite ready yet. So 
thing, additional things you want to do is restrict access to specific IP addresses for the load balancer service on Azure. Um, you, it's not ideal, but you could just lock this down to specific IP addresses. And I'll get back to some of those other additional considerations after we test out this notebook server here. Okay, so the notebook server is ready to connect. So we click on connect and we're taken to the notebook itself. So if we go to new terminal or new, yeah, new terminal, this actually doesn't load um, probably because it, it could be because the notebook's not quite ready. Um, the server's not quite ready. The cluster's not quite ready. Could be something with the browser, not entirely sure but you can click on new Python 3 notebook and you should see what you're accustomed to if you work with these kinds of notebooks. This is the Python 3 uh, kernel. The kernel's ready, so we can just print a hello world and we should get that back. So it works. Terminal's still not working, not really sure why. Um, we reload it and uh, we get an error there. So Usually that works, but sometimes it doesn't. In this case, something's bombing out. We lost the kernel on the Jupyter Notebook. So again, could be something to do with the cluster not quite being ready yet. In this case, we actually uh, canceled out of the kubectl port forward command, so that's that'll cause it to die as well. So if you wanna delete the cluster, this is the command you run, azaks delete the name of the uh, group and the name of the cluster. I kept my group resource group name and cluster name the same. This takes a while, I sped it up for you. So these resources are now gone. Everything about this uh, entire Kubeflow cluster is gone. However, if you go back to Kubernetes in the browser, you might think that it still exists. So you have to reload the page in the browser to ensure that it's gone. And we can see now that it's gone. So that's it, that's how you deploy Kubeflow from a MacBook Pro to an Azure cluster. And like I was mentioning before, uh, you would want to restrict access to specific IP addresses for the load balancer service on Azure. That's one way of, of um, paring it down a little bit. You want to ensure that the deployment is only accessible from the internal Azure subnets. You don't want this to be public in most cases. You want to secure access to the API server using authorized IP address ranges and consider utilizing Deployment Center, which is in preview right now in Azure, to connect to GitHub or other source control to deploy assets directly to AKS or Azure Kubernetes service. You can also consider utilizing AKS managed Azure Active Directory for Kubernetes. This is for authentication and authorization. And also think about maybe using Azure Key Vault as a secrets store um, where you can enable secret store CSI driver in the cluster configuration. So hope you enjoyed this video. I personally prefer running uh, Kubeflow in GCP. I think it's a better, cleaner environment. Um, it's a different version of Kubeflow. Kubeflow was developed and really invented at Google. I think Google Cloud Platform has a better handle on Kubernetes and Kubeflow. So I personally prefer doing it over there, but if you have to do it in Azure, this is a good way to get started on the development side. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.